And I'd like to take this opportunity to humbly alert the different nations of the world around, about the path that we are moving down and have been for decades. Israeli Defense Force says the military is preparing for a possible ground operation in Lebanon and it says boots will enter enemy territory. This is world leaders gather here at the United Nations General Assembly. I'd like to issue a warning here. We are coming to the end of a cycle. Collectivism and the moral posturing and the woke agenda is uh, coming up against reality. There are no further credible solutions to the real problems of the world. If the 2030 agenda fails, as recognized by its own promoters, the response sh should be to wonder whether or not this was uh, an ill-conceived program from the, out from the outset. President Trump was briefed earlier today by the Office of the Director of National Intelligence regarding real and specific threats from Iran to assassinate him in an effort to destabilize and sow chaos in the U.S. Make no mistake, the terror regime of, in Iran loves the weakness of Kamala Harris and is terrified of the strength and resolve of President Trump. He will let nothing stop him or get in his way to fight for the American people. We've seen how an organization that was born to defend the rights of man has become one of the main proponents of systematic violations of freedom, uh, su such as, for instance, uh, the lockdowns imposed in 2020, which should be seen as a... Uh, uh, a crime against humanity. The world has become divided, depressed, uh, concerned and hopeless. And it's done so in, in an unprecedented pace. Uh, the free world is no longer free. This is not an exaggeration. Tragically, we have undeniable truth of this every day. New threats of war continue. When the free world became free, it was due to freedom of uh, expression, uh, freedom before the law. But once an, a nation abandons the principles that make it free, it's only a question of time before it completely loses its freedom. The consequences of this are seeing, uh, we can see before our eyes. Biden appearing on The View just about an hour ago he was directly asked about the attempts on Donald Trump's life. But now he's blaming rhetoric from you, uh, that, that you inspired these two assassination attempts. After all of the calls for violence, you know, take them out, all the rest of it, you know what it is. Don't you think that that is just unbelievable? And what do you say to that? Well, I think he is the most unusual president. No. <laughs> Yeah. A democracy is at stake. And to restore the soul of this country. Yes, and look, Trump is... Uh, um, hmm. Careful. <laughs> There's not a lot of social redeeming value there. Mm. Uh, yeah. No, you he, think right. But, but here's the thing. He really does not does not believe in democracy. What's disturbing is that there are a whole lot of Democrats in this country who are taking his marching orders very seriously. There was a Rasmussen poll released last week that found that nearly 25% of Democrats wish the attempted assassinations had been successful. Oh. Realize where we are at because it is scary. I've come here to tell the world, on the one hand, what will happen if the United Nations continues to promote collectivist policies that it's been promoting under the mantle of the 2030 Agenda. The result was that we moved from having two world wars in less than 40 years, which together claimed more than 120 million lives, to having 70 consecutive years of relative global peace and security and stability. This was an organisation that had essentially been thought up uh, as a shield to protect the reign of men to, to, and it became a leviathan with various tentacles purporting to decide not only uh, what each not only what each nation state should do, but also how all the citizens in the world should live. That's how we moved from being an organization that pursued peace to an organization that imposes an, ideolo an ideology on its members. 
it's been replaced by a model of supranational government of international bureaucrats that attempt to impose on citizens of the world a specific way of living. The 2030 agenda, although it's well intentioned in its goals, is nothing but a mm, supranational government program that is socialist in shape. It purports to resolve the problems of modernity with solutions that afflict the sovereignty of nation states and violate the right to life, right to freedom and property of persons. It's an agenda that purports to resolve poverty, inequality, discrimination with legislation that simply furthers these issues. In this same house that had voted against the state of Israel, which is the only country in the Middle East to defend uh, a liberal democracy, we have simultaneously uh, shown a total inability to respond to the scourge of terrorism. On the economic level, we have promoted collectivist policies that undermine economic growth, violate property rights, and disrupt a natural economic process. Both Hamas and Hezbollah are backed by Iran, which has promised retaliation against Israel for the killing of a Hamas leader in Tehran last month. But their response to this latest escalation has been measured, calling on the international community to stop the violence. We are concerned about the repetition of disasters like those that happened in Gaza, and therefore we demand immediate intervention by the UN. We should immediately stop the violence and bring about a permanent ceasefire in Gaza and bring an end to the barbarism of Israel in Lebanon before it engulfs the region and the world. Israel has been defeated in Gaza and no amount of barbaric violence can restore its myth of invincibility. We're also seeing the erosion of freedom of expression, the biggest platform of social media in the world. Citizens of Western countries have been arrested for their postings on social media. Governments have had to uh, impose restrictions. This isn't a conspiracy f theory. These are fully documented, proven facts. You can't uh, win the favor of the people without respecting people. This only started, this didn't start just a, a while ago. We've only no just noticed it now because it's accelerating. And this means that we are mo moving towards a scary inflection point. We are standing uh, before a new dark period for humanity. As a Salvadorian, I recognize these symptoms because we have experienced all of them. We uh, saw the collapse of our nation step by step, and we are seeing this, these same steps, but this time on a global scale. For this reason, I'd like to officially express our dissent on the Pact for the Future that was signed on Sunday, and I invite all nations of the free world to support us, not only in relation to this pact, but also in the establishment of a new agenda for this noble institution, that is, the agenda for freedom. Long live freedom, God damn it! Thank you very much.